So, today I'm going to explain how the self-tuning induction heater version 1.0 works. I recently put the circuit together, and it's very much analogous to how a solid-state Tesla coil works, because it uses a feedback loop to drive the oscillations in the work coil, which is shown on the left right here. So this is the work coil, and um, there's a series capacitance here, a five-tone coil. This is four microfarads. And the way that this works is that there's a 555 timer chip that generates a small signal. It's a square wave signal that oscillates close to the resonant frequency of this tank coil. And um, the signal is further reduced by passing it through a 7.5k resistor. And then it goes into a hex inverter where the signal is inverted. So it's a positive signal coming here will end up being a negative signal coming out of here. And these are inverting and non-inverting gate driver chips. And these are alternatively turned on and off by this signal. And these then go to, to a gate drive transformer, which then runs your half bridge. The half bridge is connected to a coupling ferrite, tra uh, ferrite coupling transformer, which then passes its energy into this resonant circuit, which is this work coil and capacitor connected together in series. And if you're close to the resonant frequency of this, you're going to start building up energy in this work coil. And what ends up happening is that there is a current transformer which picks up the signal, which picks up some of the energy, and when there are very high currents, there's a lot of energy being picked up. So this has to be reduced to a manageable level so it can be fed back into this hex inverter. So what ends up happening, there's a very weak signal coming from this 555, and at resonance, there's a very strong signal coming from this um, current transformer. And the signal from the current transformer overrides the signal from the 555 and takes over the operation. And then at that point, this whole thing is functioning at resonance. Now, when you just start this thing up, you need a switch in place right here because the weak signal, which is further weakened by this resistor, would go um, and short directly to ground if the switch was closed. It would just go right through uh, this resistor and through this coil directly to ground, and the hex inverter would see no signal. So at startup, this switch has to be open. And then what ends up happening is once you start getting some current flowing in the tank circuit, you can then close the switch and then resonant action takes over and pretty much any small signal from this 555 is ignored. So whether or not the 555 is powered or not, this thing continues to run. Now, in reality, the 555 is, also, is always left on because if your uh, voltage were to drop too much uh, from your variac, the um, signal would not be enough to, to run this uh, feedback loop and you'd lose resonance. So this keeps some energy in the system so that the thing keeps on running. So that's basically how it works. And um, things have to be phased correctly because you're taking a positive signal here and you're generating a negative signal here, which really doesn't matter because you've got inverting or non-inverting gate driver chips. You just have to make sure that your, um, your uh, current transformer is the correct direction. And if it doesn't work, if it doesn't resonate, you need to swap this, swap the leads on this. And um, this single loop here is where your 22-turn uh, ferrite coupling transformer is connected. So, and that goes to your uh, half bridge or full bridge inverter. And power is supplied to this thing by a wall adapter, just a simple wall adapter. It just needs a 12 volt, one amp wall adapter to run the whole thing. And um, the five volts is obtained by a um, a uh, voltage regulator, which is this LM7805. And so, um, just to recap, the coupling transformer, you've got a 20, a 5 ohm, 20 watt resistor to take uh, some of the current, the, the high voltage in that uh, coil, which is 100 turns, and drop it down. So one volt is about 20 amps of uh, current in this tank circuit. And then you've got another resistor to further reduce it. You've got this um, 
set of xenodiodes, which are high power xenodiodes, they're 5 watt xenodiodes at 5 volts, to um, chop this down further to 5 volts. So you've got 5 volts here. Then you have a blocking capacitor here. And then you've got a clamp to further make sure that you're getting 5 volts in here and not more than that. And, you, and you've got, make sure you've got no ripple on this circuit. So that's basically it. And um, now, without further ado, let's, uh, let's demo it again. And I'm going to show you how this thing can, can easily mount steel um, with little or no heating of the MOSFETs. I added about 55 volts to the Variac. And now we're going to switch it into the resonant mode. And turn it up some more until we can melt that steel.